The Oxford Dictionary defines infamy as being well known for a bad quality or deed. Well, there certainly are some infamous cruise ships, and I wonder if that list is going to get bigger. In today's episode of the La Lida Loca Cruise Show, I break down the top three infamous cruise ships and ask the question, should we add a couple more? Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the La Lita Loca Cruise Show. Uh, my name's Tony. I'll be hosting today. If you enjoy travel and cruising content, please consider subscribing with the notification bell on. That way you don't miss out on any of the episodes. So let's talk about infamous cruise ships. I've got a list of three here. Before I jump into it, let me just ask you this quick question. What's the name of the cruise ship that was docked in Yokohama, Japan, quarantined in Yokohama, Japan, where the coronavirus spread? Do you know the name of that ship already? That would be a good indicator as to whether this ship will be infamous. Let's start with the recent history. 2013 Carnival Triumph on a routine seven-day sailing when there was a fire in the engine room. Now, the fire completely contained. Extinguishers did their job. Uh, the bad result was there was a power outage that followed the engine fire. The power outage lasted for four days until the Triumph could be towed back to a port. And uh, it was really bad for the people that were on board. The plumbing, the sewage system stopped working. The history of the Carnival Triumph forever marred by this one sailing, uh, giving rise to the name The Poop Cruise. Now, Carnival Cruise Line in 2019 sought to erase that history by refurbishing and renaming the Carnival Triumph. It is now the Carnival Sunrise. I've been on that infamous cruise ship. I've been on the Carnival Sunrise, and I'm glad to report uh, I did not smell any poop. It was a great cruise. Number two on the list, the infamous Costa Concordia. This happened in 2012. Costa Concordia running aground off the shores of Italy. This was a significant disaster as the ship eventually partially sank and it cost the lives of 32 passengers on board. In response to the sinking of the Costa Concordia, many cruise lines updated and stepped up their muster drill procedures, their safety drill procedures, more emphasis on where to be in the event of emergency, more emphasis on what to do in the event of an emergency. And number one on this list of infamous cruise ships, of course, no surprise here, the RMS Titanic, uh, the unsinkable vessel. Infamous because it did actually sink in the chilly waters of the Arctic Circle in 1912, costing 1,500 passengers their life. The Titanic has lived on in lore and popular culture, of course, with the popular Titanic movie. But this is a cruise ship that is referenced often when you hear people talking about disasters at sea. Uh, this is a cruise ship hit an iceberg, and people were not prepared for what happened uh, in the aftermath of that. Many people losing their life. The RMS Titanic, certainly the most infamous cruise ship. That brings us to the modern day crisis, the ships that were involved in the coronavirus outbreak, and certainly none more infamous than the one I mentioned earlier. Did you know the name Diamond Princess? This is the ship that quarantined individuals in Yokohama, Japan, as the virus spread through that ship. At the end of the day, 700 passengers contracting COVID-19, 13 passengers eventually passing away. In the approximately three months since the outbreak on the Diamond Princess, uh, all the passengers' crew have been removed from the cruise ship. Uh, the cruise ship has been given a deep level three sanitation by a company that specializes in doing that. Uh, things like removing all of the soft surfaces, mattresses, pillows, linens, uh, doing a deep clean on hard surfaces, uh, disinfecting. This is about 240 individuals in hazmat suits doing a deep cleaning, working 8 to 12 hours a day for almost a month to get this cruise ship disinfected and fit to sail. Uh, it had to pass inspection from the Japanese government before it was allowed to leave. It did pass the inspection for sanitation, and now it's been allowed to leave Yokohama, Japan, making its way to Malaysia. And for me, it's kind of cool. I've been to Yokohama. I've got some footage of what it looks like exactly where that cruise ship was docked. And I'm looking at the pictures of this thing leaving Yokohama and going to Malaysia. And immediately the question that comes to my mind, and I'm sure the mind of many, is if you were given the opportunity to sail on the Diamond Princess based on its history, 
Would you jump on? Uh, interestingly enough, someone made a replica of the Titanic, the Titanic 2, and uh, many people said they wouldn't sail it just based on it, the pedigree of the original cruise ship. And here we have the original cruise ship now, clean, spick and span, but with a little bit of a history. Uh, yeah, that's the question for the comments today. Would you sail on the Diamond Princess? Does it belong on the list of infamy? And should we even consider the other coronavirus ships? Uh, I don't know. Interesting stuff. Uh, again, the triumph uh, became the sunrise, and that turned out good. So maybe this will be better days for the Diamond Princess. Leave a comment below. If you want to see more of what Yokohama looked like, I'll include a few minutes at the end of the video. Uh, thank you so much for stopping by. Please show your support for the show by hitting the like button. My name's Tony for the La Lido Loca Crew Show, and until the next time, we'll see you on the Lido. Bye. Tokyo culture is actually you, uh, we, you landed Yokohama, Yokohama Daikoku Pier. And uh, we will drive a nearly one hour drive for Tokyo. The Tokyo is, this place is precisely not Tokyo. And uh, we will drive uh, next, Yokohama is Kanagawa Prefecture, next to Tokyo. And we have a little bit drive, Bayside Drive. And we will arrive at uh, Tokyo. A sightseeing spot. We will actually um, this tour will cover to the most uh, famous and important place for Tokyo people. You will visit. You will see too. And on the way, you will see many other sightseeing spots. We will driving by. And I am totally a uh, Tokyoite. I'm Yuki. Nice to meet you. Nice so Yuki. And I was born in Tokyo, Shinagawa City. And I grew up in Tokyo, and I'm very happy to uh, happy welcome you. And also, I want to show my city to you. You stay just uh, this afternoon, tonight, uh, today. And please enjoy. You please have a good time together. Okay. And how is the temperature on the bus? Okay, thank you. And over your head, uh, you will find black band. Cool, uh, cool air will come out from black window. Today is outside the temperature oh. will expose to all over the world. So this place is some many many taxis, the trucks looks like the same cars all over the world. So now we driving expressway which name is Shutoko Metropolitan Expressway bound for Tokyo Bayside route. We, we will drive expressway and we will have beautiful view. Please enjoy its driving. And we drive north to Tokyo. Actually, distance between your home to Tokyo is nearly 30 kilometers. 30, 30 kilometers away. So, not so far. And we drive nearly one hour drive. And uh, we will stop at two places. First, once we will stop at Imperial. Paris, but we cannot uh, uh, enter the Imperial Palace Plaza, uh, Oasis in Tokyo, you will see the main gate of Imperial Palace, and Plaza and the Samurai Statue, so on. Uh, before that, bus will drive by Jinza. Jinza is shopping, uh, Japanese Fifth Avenue, and today is Saturday afternoon.